Oh guys, it is a gorgeous spring evening here in the collapse of everything. It is a Thursday night, that would be March 7th, 2024. And so guys, you know, I, I kept planning to, to wait on all of these till tomorrow night for my ain't gonna happen uh, round up tomorrow night but we went from one to two to three to four and so now I, I think I'm gonna rename this channel the ain't gonna happen Chronicles and so these I'm gonna talk about four little things this four kind of separated you can connect the dots between these four and we're gonna call these ain't gonna happen adjacent ain't gonna happen adjacent comments then tomorrow night I will get back to my regularly scheduled just going you know through the mainstream media looking at shit that ain't gonna happen but uh let's see what were the four things okay I'm uh I'm not gonna use any names on some of these uh, okay so who this involves Guys, so you know that I no longer do interviews. Well, very rarely, because one of the reasons I stopped doing interviews is I, I just got sick and tired of the hopium, where week after week, people would come on, blab for one hour about how completely fucked we are, and then in the last two or three minutes, of the conversation uh, on their way out of the door they would uh, just pull some hopium comment out their ass and uh, so we're going to use this as a launch pad I'm, I'm not going to use the name of this person <coughs> so anyway I found this essay by this fellow uh, last week uh, I read it. I was very impressed by it. You might know <clears throat> who I am talking about if you've been listening closely uh, to my rants uh, recently. So uh, both Elliot Jacobson and I were both very impressed by this man who spelled it out in plain English that we are fucked and we have been fucked for a lot longer than previously believed, or that most people believe, that the uh, the age of humans, whatever you want to call it, it, you know, started a hell of a lot millennia back uh, before any 1952. So this guy wrote this excellent article explaining this that uh, humans have been fucking this planet uh, for a hell of a lot longer than most people think. Uh, so anyway, I invited him to be uh, a guest on Collapse Chronicles. I said, finally, this man, I can bring on this man and have a hopium-free ain't gonna happen free interview this is the response I received from this gentleman today hi Sam thank you for reaching out at this point I'm swamped and I am never eager to promote collapse narratives even by association such narratives have little to offer in the solution space, which is where I focus my efforts best. <sighs> and there, 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 there you go, guys. This, this, uh, if, if anybody is looking for a crystal clear example uh, of where a scientist, you know, where an educated scientist knows goddamn well how fucked we are, 
uh, how, how fucked we've been for the past at least 10,000 years and how fucked we're going to be uh, and they want nothing to do with doomers. They don't want to hear it. They're, they're not going to be part of it even by association. The, the, these guys, uh, you know, the, the, these are intelligent. This guy was was educated at Cornell University. He, ha he has a PhD, like probably in ecology or biology from Cornell University. Does not want anything to do with Sam Mitchell or Elliot Jacobson. Uh, he has no interest in talking about the collapse of anything, even by associations. So he is going to focus his efforts in the solution space. I think it's safe to say we will not be interviewing this gentleman. And I'm pretty, as I told Elliot, when we got this response back, I, I, I said, brother, I, I'm just done with interviews. I, I'm done with it. Uh, the, 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 the goddamn hopium coming out, and let's see how, many, how much trouble I can get myself in on this comment. So I was listening, as I know a lot of people listening to this right now were to this excellent interview with this doomer uh, in... in, in, in Recently, recently, on I was listening onto these one of these Doomer channels, and the interviewer, I think, this was their single best interview I have ever heard. The person they were interviewing, whose name I am not going to mention, because I I just I I just don't need to stir up the shit in my life. Uh, well, this interview went on for close to two hours close to two hours and literally in the last two minutes, the last two minutes, this uh, obviously intelligent doomer knowing exactly how fucked we are, a, I, I was go going to play the clip but uh, for obvious reasons, uh, I, I, I am not going to play the clip. And, 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 and I'm not, the, my purpose here is not to embarrass anyone. It really isn't. But what this person said uh, was, it, 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 this is a paraphrasing, it, it, it is about how, it, we're, we're, you know, something like, we're not going to be able to entirely avoid collapse, but we're going to steer collapse. We're going to steer collapse in the right direction or something like that for, I guess, some sort of, uh, some sort of soft landing. So, uh, you, I think I got the final comment of the night, uh, and, and my comment, which I think made it in just under the wire, was steer collapse, AGH alert. You know, I'm thinking about what does steering the collapse of global industrial civilization look like? I, I, I can't help but think of the Hindenburg. Oh, the humanity! Uh, you know, the Hindenburg, that, you know, with, with, the, with the flames flying out the back, and, and here's the pilot of the Hindenburg uh, with, with this fucking basically hydrogen explosion going on at, at 10,000 feet or whatever. With How many people died in that crash? And this guy is thinking, well, we might not be able to totally avoid this crash, but maybe, maybe I can steer the Hindenburg in the right direction for a, some, some sort of soft landing. So uh, instead of 500 people dying or however many people it was, 
uh, uh, only a hundred people died. Uh, what, what the fuck? What the fuck does steering the collapse of global industrial civilization look like? It, 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 you know, uh, it, it just, I won't say that moronic comment at the very end, coming out of nowhere, uh, obliterated everything else uh, this person said uh, in the last two hours, but, uh, and I won't make a, to really say myself, I will not repeat the comment that the, uh, that the interviewer uh, made when, when, when hearing this comment, uh, I will not repeat the response of the interviewer because uh, I love this interviewer dearly and uh, what's left of my friendship after this. Uh, I'm going to shut up now. Uh, speaking of, uh, of Doomer friendships that are, that, that are teetering on the edge of the abyss, uh, <laughs> I do want to thank uh, my, I, I do consider him still, uh, believe it or not, uh, I do uh, consider Michael Campy a, a, a friend of mine. We, Michael Campy and I, we, we disagree on one little, one little thing and, and uh, we're both trying to uh, uh, just respectfully disagree with each other on one subject which has nothing to do with the collapse of anything so we don't need to mention it. But Michael Campy and I otherwise uh, see 100% eye to eye, and Michael did a um, did an essay in uh, on Medium.com. He's one of these Doomer writers on Medium. I've I've actually interviewed Michael two times. Uh, Michael has the honor of being interviewed on both of my channels, uh, and what it was about was foraging for food after the collapse, about these people, and you hear this unadulterated horseshit that, you know, when, they, when there's no more food in the supermarkets, you know, every supermarket in this country, what do they call it, the 72 hour, you work at a supermarket, is it 72 hours? Probably, if I give it that. If he even, so we, we have a man who actually works at a supermarket. Actually, the best time to test this theory is there is a hurricane. During a hurricane. Yeah. That's an excellent time to show you a collapse. <laughs> it's like Christmas time. Yeah, well, so anyway, but after the, the store shelves are cleared and there are no more 18-wheelers to refill them, that uh, people actually claiming with a straight face that they're going to get out there and forage for food <laughs> to uh, feed themselves and, and, and their families. And as I commented back to Michael that I, that, that, that I cannot believe that, uh, that Elliot and I, when we did our Ain't Gonna Happen, uh, list at the a few weeks ago when we made these exhaustive ain't gonna happen lists that that we left foraging for food uh, off of either one neither one of us mentioned it but it's even bigger than that what, what and Elliot did you mention some of this I, I, I just totally spaced this out because it has nothing to do with my reality. And that's all of this survivalist, prepper, survivalist, unadulterated horseshit. The, the, every fucking aspect uh, of I, I don't give a fuck, uh, foraging for food, uh, moving into a bunker, whatever the hell uh, the, 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 these preppers are, uh, I, I don't think that now, now, now these preppers, as I say, I have nothing to do with, with these preppers. I, I've told you the only thing that I have stockpiled are these glasses from the $1.25 tree so I don't end up like Piggy uh, in Lord of the Flies. 
So I have like 50 pairs of these cheap, th this is the one item that I am prepping for the collapse of global industrial so there's 50 pairs of cheap reading glasses. That's it for me. And I highly advise you get your ass down to the $1.25 tree and do the same thing while you still can. But th th this whole prepping survivalist, it, it, from day one, it has seemed like unadulterated horseshit. Now, as I say, I don't think that they're claiming that they're going to uh, keep global industrial civilization from collapsing. It's, it's not a solution to collapse. It's not in, what did this man call it? The solution space. That prepping is not in the solution space. It, it is a reaction to at least preppers uh, understand that, that, that we're fucked and this whole thing is coming down. Uh, they get it, but of course where they go off the rails is that they think that they're going to somehow survive, uh, that this is something that they can prepare for by hoarding guns and ammo and uh, I, I don't know, macaroni and cheese or whatever the hell. I can uh, see, uh, uh, redneck uh, maybe making it, but. Uh, well, a country boy can country survive. Boy, yeah. A country boy can survive. Maybe an Indian. Uh, yeah, so. Uh, and, and the other thing is, uh, uh, okay. And my, and my other question is, even if any of this unadulterated horseshit ain't gonna happen, does happen, and, 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 and like, why the fuck would anybody want to survive the collapse of global industrial civilization? I mean, life without global industrial civilization would suck it would seriously suck. Uh, I have no desire to be alive w w without global industrial civilization saving my honky privileged ass. Uh, no interest in it whatsoever as my buddy Antonio Reed says uh, ab about surviving uh, the collapse he has one request to his neighbor coming in the door after his last can of Beanie Weenies. Please, could you just make it a clean headshot? Uh, that, that, that's my only thing I ask of the survivalist is when you come for my last... And, and I got a shitload of cans of Beanie Weenies up there. Yes, you do. I got... I probably shouldn't be advertising how many fucking cans of Beanie Weenies I have in Doomsday Trailer. See, you would, someone would open see, up that cabinet. My tenants here with preppers. Uh, yeah, so somebody would open up that cabinet and, and, and think that I am hoarding beanie weenies mm -hmm. in Doomsday Trailer. But we'll, we'll have to go take a picture of the cabinet. But yeah, no, uh, at, tenants, the, at the end of this rant. My tenants here were preppers. Yeah, so uh, they uh, they stockpiled a bunch of food in this. They house. did, and I'm about gone through her stockpile of beauty berry jelly. So, <laughs> but but. Uh, but why would anybody, have these guys thought this through? Uh, it, 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 anyway, okay, so this is just kind of a hodgepodge. Now, I want to wrap up this uh, rant with a comment from one of my uh, alert listeners. Uh, this is uh, Cheryl Ann. I, I think Cheryl Ann has left a few comments. Uh, this was her comment. I, I did this video last night on Alan Urban's essay about what it means to be, uh, to Alan, to be collapse aware. And this was Cheryl Ann's. <clears throat> response to that video and my response to Cheryl Ann, which I'll elaborate. <clears throat> so Cheryl Ann says, I have a third of an acre with a seasonal creek 
that touches a little pond. Sounds like a nice place. It is a protected Canada, Canada goose nesting ground. I feed the geese and do what I can to improve their habitat. If everyone did what little bit they could, instead of saying, oh, there's nothing I can do, a difference <coughs> for the better could manifest. Everyone can stop using toxic chemicals, for example. And that alone, that alone, just if everyone on this planet today stopped using toxic chemicals, that alone, if half the population did that, the water, soil, and air would be 50% cleaner. This, is, uh, this was news to me from Cheryl Ann. And, and again, my, my, I, I'm not here to embarrass Cheryl Ann. I appreciate the comment. She is joining the debate. My response to Cheryl Lamb, the mythical, if everyone, if everyone uh, is at the root of the AGH ripple effect. As a matter of fact, everyone cannot stop using toxic chemicals and would not if they could. If we just stopped toxic chemicals, civilization would collapse and the population of the planet would be reduced by 90% within six months, which is the number one reason the soil and the air and the humans and our fellow earthlings are all fucked. And uh, <laughs> this whole thing, if, if everyone, although she's just saying if only four billion people would stop using toxic chemicals, that 50% of the planet would just, uh, would just, would just be reborn. Yes, uh, toxic, okay. What would it look like in the year 2024 for one human being on this planet to stop using toxic chemicals? And, th and this is where, you know, this took me six years to figure out on my own when, when you know, I did not drive for six years. Uh, I, I rode a bicycle, but uh, I guess when I went to the grocery store, you, you know, I took public transportation. And, uh, but, but I did not drive a gas-sucking car for six years as my virtue signaling to save the planet. To be the, uh, what, what is that Buddhist thing, be the change you want to be, until I realized that every single thing, every, I mean, by, by every single thing, I mean 100 percent of any product that you buy from a store uh, was was delivered there on a, 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 a on a if you if you follow the fossil fuel which is a which is certainly a toxic chemical I think Cheryl Lamb will join me that any fossil fuel is a toxic chemical Okay, there, there, there is nothing, this gentleman listening to this works at Walmart. Is there anything at Walmart that's delivered on a horse, Aaron? You don't, you don't unload covered wagons at the, from Amish people at, at the back of that Walmart every day? No. You've never, you've never seen an Amish covered wagon in the loading dock at a Walmart? Never have. Oh, really? Oh, huh, that blows! I I thought Walmart. Pretty, was... pretty sure it all comes on semi semi trucks and uh, e even even that organic produce even, wrapped in plastic. Even uh, organic stuff is shipped on uh, yeah, semi trucks. Yeah. So 
comes from a warehouse where stuff is shipped there mm -hmm. on semi trucks that probably and come from container okay. ships. <laughs> The and then, of course, trucks had to load the, uh, and the container ships yeah. coming from probably China, yeah. across yeah. the Pacific Ocean. Yeah, the, the diesel the, engines. Uh, yeah, the the, the 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 very idea. Okay, in order to stop using toxic chemicals, that does not mean rid your house of. Uh, I, I, I don't know, trade your dishwashing, Dawn dishwashing liquid for orange peel juice. Uh, it, it means, this is what it would mean. Uh, y y if you are willing to live naked in a cave or a hollow log, okay, if you're, you, you live naked, in a cave or a hollow log and 100 percent of your well your shelter you're in a cave or a hollow log 100 percent of your food your water your shelter your clothing and your energy is provided by nature Okay, which is the way humans lived for the first, if we've been here 300,000 years, pretty much for the first 299,500 years, that's how we lived. Okay, that is how you could stop using toxic chemicals. What, what, this, this is all just one more example uh, th that we are, every one of us, are cogs in the global industrial civilization system. Every single one of us is a pawn, we're pawns in the game. Uh, this is why there is no such thing as a solution space. With the possible exception of not breeding, there is not a goddamn thing that anybody can do to uh, I any lifestyle or consumer choice that you can make. And I'm cheering you on, Cheryl Ann, if you've traded in your Dawn dishwashing liquid for orange peel juice, which is probably like my orange peel juice in my cabinet is in a little plastic sprayer. Uh, every time your fingers touch anything made of plastic, every time obviously you turn the key of your gas sucking car, uh, every time uh, you put on your clothes in the morning, uh, every time you brush your teeth and, and pick up a plastic uh, toothbrush. Have you seen the pictures of the baby albatrosses on Midway Island choking to death on the plastic toothbrushes? Uh, there is no such thing as one human being on this planet not using toxic chemicals. And Cheryl Ann, I hate to tell you, darling, you use toxic chemicals 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know, come to think of it, probably the very first time we created toxic chemicals is when we discovered metallurgy. You know, when I started... Uh, Making metal tools, yeah, uh, that, that makes some serious <laughs> toxic waste and gases. To the Bronze Age is Probably right. when they started smelting copper in the bronze. Yeah, that was mm -hmm. the first start of toxic chemicals <laughs> by humans. Oh, I bet it goes back be It way, probably uh, does. I, I, I would think the invention of fire. Yeah. Uh, That's definitely an artificially created. It, it's uh, it's a human created thing. So, or the, I always get in trouble whenever I say, whichever one I say, someone goes whether I say the invent the, the invention of fire or the discovery of fire, yeah. but we all know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Uh, when humans started uh, learning how to strike a match and burn the place down. Yeah. Uh, 
a- a- anyway, uh, if everyone, if everyone would just, ain't gonna happen. Because uh, so. we largely made a lot of things out of nature. You know, back then, a lot of our clothes was made from natural sources. Yeah, um, from animal skins, animal skins so. and stuff like that. So uh, silk and now silk probably added a, a certain level of industrialization that yeah. that uh, Neanderthals never had. No. But anyway, well, we get it. I just wanted to uh, wrap up those four loose ends, and now I uh, need to go uh, uh, salvage my friendship with, uh, <laughs> with, with with that comment I, I made about their reaction to the uh, we're going we're going to steer the collapse of global industrial civilization in the right direction. <clears throat> Soften the soften the landing of the collapse of everything, <clears throat> but I will be back tomorrow. Oh shit! I'm leaving. I will have to do it tomorrow morning. I will <clears throat> be back with our uh, normally weekly roundup of the mainstream media. Ain't gonna happen. What do you think, little dog? You say I'm just glad the end of this rant has happened. Bye, guys.